A very good evening and welcome to the fourth estate on NTV, Charles Mwangu Shampagi. And tonight we discuss after weeks of a probe into a tribunal rather into the conduct of Lord Mayor Arias Lukwago, what he thinks is a culmination of the fight against him told that office. The tribunal released its report earlier last week and the verdict is he is guilty on all the three counts uh, on which the council has petitioned. And I'll read out those um, three counts. Abuse of office, incompetence, and misconduct or misbehavior. Justice Catherine Bamgemerere presented her report to the Minister for the Presidency, who's also Minister for Kampala, Frank Tumwebaze. And now what awaits, uh, what is being waited for is the composition, full composition of the council, election of professional representative to the Kampala Capital City Council, and then a council meeting will be held to determine whether Lukwago should be impeached. To discuss that tonight, the man who led the petitioners as their lawyer and legal representative to the tribunal, Kiwanu Kakirioa, commonly known as KK. KK, very nice to have you. Thank you, Charles. Uh, good evening, viewers. Very nice to be here. Thank you. Um, Chigiwa Shiwanuka, I'm being reminded that actually I, I'm remembering that your, the correct order is uh, Chigiwa Shiwanuka. That's correct. Not Chiwanuka Chigiwa. <coughs> it's the Chigiwa Shiwanuka Chigiwa is the, is the Christian name. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. That's an interesting one. I should announce to our viewers that we should have had Lord Mayor Arias Lokwago himself in the studio, but for some reason, we are unable to have him in the studio. We'll invite him on another occasion, especially now that this story is still a growing story. From the Associated Press, Uganda correspondent, Rodney Mumza. Rodney, very nice to have you. Thanks, Charles. It's good to be with you. And of course, the revolutionary political journalist, Chris Obori, investigations editor at the Daily Monitor. Chris, very nice to have you. Thank again. you. Happy to meet Rodin again. <laughs> Angela is traveling the countryside, so he's unable to join us tonight. Let me start with the uh, UKK. How do you feel as a lawyer who represented these councillors to have a verdict 100% in the favor of your clients? Well, uh, that is what uh, every lawyer works for, to win cases. You know, in, in the law, we, do not have, uh, we don't have draws. You either win or you lose. The only, the only way you can have a draw is if you settle out of, without a, a decision. It, it, it is great. It feels, it feels good. It's a victory, and I think I, I, I'm happy to celebrate it. What do you think this means for Kampala Capital City? Well, I think what it means for Kampala Capital City from uh, the legal perspective is that uh, obviously the councillors are going to decide. The, the, the tribunal just simply says, yeah, That's you can go process. ahead. Is that what it means? That's what it means. I think it means uh, it's, a, it's a learning process. There's so many things I've been, I've, I've learned a lot about the, the way the authority works. I've learned a lot about the <coughs> persons involved. And I think there's a number of things that need to be done to make this better. But I think we are moving in the correct direction. Mm. It's a learning process. I have had uh, reports, actually, very many people have talked about uh, the need to amend this law. It's one of the youngest laws we have in the country but also one law that uh, many people think is, uh, w was uh, done hurriedly, is uh, inadequate, and uh, not good for Kampala and where it's supposed to be going. What do you think as a lawyer? I think the law itself may have its, uh, its challenges, especially where you have uh, the politics strictly uh, straight away clashing with the, with the law. You have a situation, uh, as it has played out now, you have an opposition uh, mayor in a city being run by the government, which is NRM. So you're always going to have that clash. You have a law which says that the Lord Mayor is answerable to the minister. Now, if the Lord Mayor is answerable to the minister and they decide to run different political agenda, you'll have a problem. Administratively, the law would, would work, but there's a need to balance between the politics and, 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 the, and the output. There has been some criticism of the tribunal, of Justice Catherine Bamgemereide. Actually, I wanted to note, uh, as we start this show, that um, uh, just a couple of days ago, uh, Friday, uh, there was the passing on of uh, uh, Justice uh, Amos Tunomjuni. Yeah, yes. uh, the sad passing of Justice Amos Tunomjuni. And we're still discussing the judicial and uh, issues around it. But as a lawyer, as someone who lives and works in Kampala for most of the time, do you think that um, this tribunal did its job? There has been criticism that um, 
it actually overstepped its mandate, turned itself into a probe. You are the lawyer, you can tell us the difference between a tribunal and a probe committee. This actually, this, the law requires that an investigation be carried up by a tribunal uh, which has a, a person who qualifies to be a judge of the high court or above. The, actually, the law says it's an <coughs> investigation. And as far as I'm concerned, once it's an investigation, you have the choice of determining how you're going to manage the investigation. I think the tribunal did its best in the circumstances. We had so many difficult situations, walk in, walk out, fights in, fights out, and it's, it's very dif it, was v it was a very difficult and trying uh, process for them. I, I would imagine if I were in, in, in the tribunal's position. But I think the tribunal did a good job. You see, the beauty about this is you're dealing with facts. You see, the only way you can challenge a person is to say that that fact that you have found is not correct. You see, if you say that minutes were not signed, the only answer that you can get for that to say that the, the tribunal the was signed. wrong mm. is bring signed minutes. You see, and, and, and you see, that that's what I'm saying. If they say you failed to convene meetings, requisitioned by the councillors, the only answer that can be is an answer that no. They, they, they requisitioned on such and such a day, I convened on the next day. I, uh, that's, it's for me, as far as I'm concerned from a legal perspective, it's factual. Mm. We, 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 as, 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 as lawyers, we lose some and win some. And every time you lose a case, you feel, you, 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 you feel that, uh, that the court wasn't fair to you. Mm. I don't think it's fair to the tribunal to say that they, were not, they did not do a good job only because you've lost, but you have an opportunity do to Do you find test the recommendation that? of the tribunal? The tribunal proposes that the KCC Act be amended to provide for a city mayor who, although elected by the people, will be inclined less towards political politics and more towards service delivery. And the discussion of the role of politicians in the city was focused on two major projects. This, this is the detail they give. Did you find this? Uh, I've seen a lot of criticism about this, a lot of debate about um, a recommendation like this. You see, first of all, that recommendation is given in an area that they call Pyncurium. You see, uh, you're carrying out an investigation. The investigation was about the Lord Mayor. The investigation was not about the law. The investigation was not about the minister. The investigation was not about the councillor. It was about the Lord Mayor and his participation in this process. That, that was what was being discussed. Now, what the tribunal says is that in the process of carrying out an investigation <coughs> on the Lord Mayor, I found certain areas needed to be thing. That is something, food for thought. It, it's really not a recommendation because they, they're not overstepping their limits because that's not the thing. They're saying, I have had an opportunity to go through this process. I've had a lot of documentation. I think you need to look at this. I have found him guilty. Yes, because the evidence is there that he's guilty. But I also need, I think, you need to look into that. And that is, a, 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 in my view, a very good practice. Even when... Even it's, it's a very good practice, uh, Mr. Chiro, I need to put it to you, that uh, apart from being uh, a lawyer in private practice, you also um, openly, you support the NLM government, you've been uh, working with it, and uh, this probe, uh, this tribunal rather, its verdict, your selection as uh, the legal representative for the petitioning uh, councillors, is largely based on a continuing fight between the NRM as a political entity and the Lord Mayor, who represents a different political entity. So you, we cannot debate with you strictly based on uh, your legal expertise. Yes, uh, Charles, you, you're very correct. I subscribe to the NRM. I support the NRM. That's correct. You must also understand that uh, out of the uh, 17 petitioners, I think uh, 16 or 15 were NRM uh, councillors. Um, so yes, definitely, there is going to be a point where the law meets the politics. That, that is not without a doubt, and I did not go into this thing, into this transaction oblivious of that fact. Mm. I was very clear. Obviously, if, uh, if, uh, if, they, if uh, probably the Lord Mayor had come to me first, I would have probably considered defending him, but <laughs> th he, he's a personal friend, but that's another matter. Mm. Yes, I am with the NRM, I support the NRM, and I, I actually believe that the Lord Mayor, in failing the process of service delivery in Kampala, affects the NRM, the party that I support. And therefore, if I can go and argue the case to show that he is failing this process... You're not an just an ordinary support of the NRM, are you? I am just an ordinary support. You know, between you and me and uh, the people watching us, they know that you do more for the NRM than... Ye yes, and, and, and I'm telling you, as long as the NRM, the party that I subscribe to, mm. asks me to do something within the law... And so I you asked by the party to do this work? No, no, this was... The instructions came from, from the councillors. The councillors came the to me. paying your legal fees? 
They are paying. Or you represented fee. them pro bono? No, no, no. I don't do and I, I don't do pro bono work. <laughs> uh, Ronnie, let me bring you into this discussion. Yes. The legal part has been done. A tribunal has found Lukwago guilty on all the three counts on which the councillors uh, led by Brian Mutebi. Is that correct? Bruhan Bjarhan Bjarhanga uh, has found him guilty, and he faces imminent impeachment. Does that answer the challenges of Kampala? No, it doesn't actually. And and I, I always wondered to myself, why does Elias Lukwago, who is a man of immense political talent, want to be Lord Mayor of Kampala? And he's been saying lately that he wants to run again for office if and when he's removed from that office. And it's, it's ridiculous, first of all, if you have an executive director who seems to wield all the power and who seems to be doing such a good work, and you, you from the very start, um, have been possessed by this me against the world mentality. Uh, I, I mean, it's always seemed to me that he was trying so hard to be a very political mayor at a time when, in fact, he had uh, very limited political capital. So I think he did not do himself many favors. And, and, and I, I wish he would have been here because I would, wanted to, I would have loved to ask him why, indeed, he wants to be mayor of Kampala. Mm. I think it's, um, it's a very degraded office. Uh, I mean, days of Savannah, the, the office had clout. And all around the world, mayors have, they have credibility, they have gravitas. But the road mayor of Kampala is a, it's an almost silly job, really. Um, uh, it's, um, it's a vastly degraded job. And, and I can't imagine why Mr. Lukwago would want to I, isn't even run that again. Isn't purely through the lenses of Lukwago, who represents the opposition and has been uh, a kind of a thorn? Because from the time he was elected, he said uh, it wasn't his victor. It wasn't a victor against his opponent, Sema Timba. It was a victor against President Yerim Seven. And R it was structured as that. Right. And I do feel sorry for him. I mm. think he's, he's been targeted for his very, very... Um, uh, strong political views, um, but my sympathy stops there. I think, um, on the other hand, uh, he's, he hasn't put up a very good account of himself in terms of service delivery. He's been, for the most part, running around uh, holding rallies, uh, and there's space for that. But if you are Lord Mayor of a city in need like Kampala, where there's so much to fix, and you're up against an executive director who seems to be having public pop opinion swaying her way, you, you are in trouble. So. Um, I don't think it's about Ayas Lukwago as, as a point. I think it's about the office of Lord Mayor. Do okay. we actually need it? Uh, Chris, do we need the office of Lord Mayor in Kampala? And uh, if we looked at this situation that Lukwago finds himself in, uh, he should, his office, his term of office should be running out in uh, the next uh, two and a half years. By 2016, he should also be subjecting himself to a new election. Uh, isn't that a kind of narrow way to look at uh, the challenges of Kampala and the position of an elected mayor? Do we need a Lord Mayor, real? It's like asking, do we need politics? Politics is as ancient as human civilization. There is no life without politics. So that office is definitely has to be there. And uh, you see, governance is a behavioral disposition of those who hold the power. But good governance is the conduct of public affairs in a manner that is satisfactory to the values in that society. So I would like to take this debate from that point. Do we see a conduct that's satisfactory to the values of this country called Uganda? Mm. And I don't, I don't think so. And I see in the KCCA our failure to define our problems. It's the same thing I was putting to Ian Clark on, on Saturday. You see, when you look Ian at Clark this... Ian Clark is uh, the mayor the, yes, of Makinde. Makinde. Mm. He was a bit uh, very, very open-minded. You see, the problem we are facing as a country is a crisis of failure to identify a problem and understand that problem. But what we are good at, we are good at issuing solutions. And you know, giving a solution is very easy than understanding a problem. But the problem of rushing with, with answers to a very unknown problem, or not properly understood problem, is that we end up in a situation where we are in now. So what are the problems of Kampala? Can you remove the problems of Kampala from the problems of Uganda? Is it possible? I don't think so. So when Kiriwakiwanka comes and says it's not a matter of the law, yes, the law exists. But if I, if I may ask, what are the forces that shape that law? In what environment is that law operating? So you see, that's when you begin to understand the actions of, of all these protagonists. Why is Musisi seen to be performing? Everyone is saying, okay, she's doing well. She's performing well. But Lukaku is saying, hey, why are we not listening to this other voice? Because the power of a good leader is listening to those that have different views from yours. If Ulukwago is seen to be a problem, why is he a problem? 
Yes, you're saying look, uh, this is performing because there are flowers, there is a road being done. But hey, Lukaku might be saying, yes, you're doing a road. At how much? You have the flowers. What was the cost? How did you procure them? Those are all important questions in governance. But I'm seeing a wind saying, you know, right now the city is being managed well. You are subjugating issues of accountability to the sideline. Let's so the issue now is, how do you reconcile the accountability advocates plus those who claim to be delivering services? Let's take a break and pick up this discussion in a moment. We'll be right back.